awesome. Uh, hi, Adam. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. What's your name? Welcome to the show. Welcome. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Merrick. I'm from Germany. <laughs> ah. nice, nice, nice to speak to you. I hope uh, my English is good enough for you. <laughs> That's a great accent. Um, good talk. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, like an ugly American. Yeah, no, <laughs> hey, uh, where are you calling from? I'm from, um, yeah, near Cologne, if you know, West, West Germany, West Germany. I've been to Cologne. So you said you pronounced it the American way. I pronounced <laughs> it the German way. Yeah, just okay, without okay. The, the silly <laughs> accent, right? Because it's, it's K-O umlaut L-N, right? So in German, yes. Cologne but it's known internationally as Cologne. Yes, yes, that's uh, the English uh, language. <laughs> so um, are, are you able, are you, I mean, your English, you know, obviously in, well, I should point out most Americans don't know this, but the rest of the world speaks English a lot better than Americans speak other languages, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you have the advantage that, uh, you can nearly understand everyone else, uh, but um, yeah, I think it's good for your brain development if you can uh, speak two languages or more. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to say uh, thank you for your work, man. I woke up like in 2012 with Ron Paul and his amazing uh, speeches. And uh, you don't even know me, but I know a lot about you. Um, I'm following you yeah, since then. And <laughs> I'm uh, yeah, really excited to, to speak to you. Um, yeah, and I want to give you a um, quick briefing about the situation in Germany right now. Uh, because you, you know the uh, fake news media isn't... Um, the protests yes. and the numbers are being yes. very underreported, I, right? I don't know if you saw the pictures. Uh, I was in Berlin uh, last Saturday. It was the hugest uh, protest ever in Germany after the fall of the wall. And um, yes. hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's under let, let let's underscore this point. This is really important. You're saying that in Berlin. Yes. They, have, been they over. have had the biggest protests since the uh, fall of the uh, Berlin uh, Wall uh, in since order the to protect the corona yes. lockdown policies. Yes, because uh, this is uh, like a huge wake up um, in the German population. They, they Many just started to um, yeah, realize that the uh, mainstream media is lying uh, because they lie about the coronavirus. And they start to uh, think about other topics. Um, yeah, but the, <laughs> the government uh, knew about uh, this uh, big protest, and it was there have been so many um, false flag actions. Uh, you can't even tell it was like the police brutality was off limits. Um, I haven't been on so many demonstrations in my life, but this was the second time. Actually, there was a huge demonstration in Berlin. Uh, but this time the uh, deep state was well prepared and um, they, like, at the beginning there was a big um, march to Berlin and they um, had uh, provocators at the front line. They um, attacked the police, so the police had a reason to stop the march. Um, and then they blocked also the sidewalks. Um, before the demonstration, actually, uh, yeah, I'm sorry that I'm, uh, uh, I have so many information about this. Um, they uh, forbid the demonstration um, before that. Um, yeah, and they, they blocked the roads. They, uh, then, yeah, they blocked the world, so the um, march was at the front. Uh, there have been too, too many people, and they couldn't keep their social distance. Uh, and yes, that's the reason why they, uh, um, yeah, 
they d dissolved the, uh, the protest um, and um, they, they have been all like uh, peaceful. They, everyone was so peaceful. Uh, they, look, they let the police do everything to them. There, uh, there was like people in front of uh, um, a poster of Gandhi meditating and they, um, yeah, the police was beating them up like shit and they just meditating meditating uh, in front of a uh, poster of uh, Gandhi, you know what I mean? It's crazy. And yeah, I just want to say it because uh, many people didn't uh, hear about it. And I also didn't uh, know, for example, that in Australia they had like a really hard lockdown um, and people have been uh, arrested because of uh, Facebook posts against the lockdowns. It was like, what the hell, what the hell? And you you don't he hear about that. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah Australia is just... yeah Australia is on a whole other level. And I, I think one of the things I want to do next week with the program uh, that you've inspired a little bit, uh, you know, for me to get to, it's been something I've wanted to incorporate into the show more as a, a sort of global survey of where things are with the lockdowns and and protests and responses around the world. And from what we saw earlier on, there were a lot of uh, third world type countries or sort of, you know, in between second world where the people are very poor, but they have organized governments with significant police forces. And there was some pretty brutal repression. We saw in India, they had these COVID enforcement cops going around where they had a helmet that had the red you know, like spikes to, to, to look like the virus. I mean, just goofy shit. But then you saw those guys beating people with truncheons and you go. Yeah, it's for the help of the people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm glad I live. I mean, in, in I, I've spent some time in Germany. Um, and I, I think we can say that when something like this happens, we are very fortunate. To live in first world countries yes, where yes, even as, as, even as up, bad up. as it is in the united states know, know, we have yeah. a relatively safe i know this is going to sound crazy because i am constantly pointing out how dangerous the police state is in america yes, but yes. it is relatively I know, safe. I know what you mean i'm all uh, i mean the like uh, we, we, we don't we don't uh, die uh, because of uh, hunger at least for now uh, but like right. you have to see the uh, poor countries, like uh, many countries in Africa, they they are people who, yeah, um, they are living from the daily um, money they make, and if this money isn't coming, then they have to starve to death. Yeah, and, no, and, and in, in countries like that, if, if you have to worry about feeding your family. And you, like on a day to day basis, you have you are food insecure. You are that ha hand to mouth as most human beings on the planet still are, depending on how you want to measure. I don't want to say it that decisively, but certainly most human beings on the planet are a lot closer to that than we as American citizens of the empire or even privileged German citizens are in the world today. So we are, we are also been, part of your empire. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, good, 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 good point. Uh, right. At this point. Yes. Uh, so we've been covering this story in, in Europe, but in Germany in particular, uh, since the protests started, uh, you know, becoming a, a significant phenomenon in Germany, you know, a couple months ago. And then we spoke to our friend Ben Swan. I highly recommend people mm -hmm. check his work out. That's Swan with yeah, two N. Ben Swan. And I had covered the story about the protests the day before interviewing him. And I repeated that 17,000 number. And he was like, no, dude. No, I, <laughs> no. Uh, Even back uh, then, uh, it was in the hundreds to, of thousands. You have to check your Instagram account. Uh, I have sent you a um, um, an video of uh, a helicopter of the um, demonstration, an overview. Ah, uh, yes. And, and yeah, you, yeah. You see, now, like, at the Brandenburg, uh, Brandenburg Tor, the Brandenburg Gate, you see, uh, like, it's a really, really um, big street, like, only people, only people everywhere. It's, like, uh, packed. 
So I would guess at least at least two million people have been there. Uh, and yeah, yeah. The, the, at the first first protests uh, protest in uh, at first uh, August, the mainstream media said like something like seventeen to twenty um, thousand uh, people, but uh, alone uh, on the big street, normally like at uh, Sylvester or something like that. When the street is full, um, the media normally talks about 200 to uh, 300,000 people. So, yeah. you know, they, that's so obvious. And now uh, at the second big protest, they, they said uh, like uh, 38,000 people. And you were like, <laughs> everyone who was there and um, was never uh, awake, is now awake because they have seen the lie for their um, with their own eyes. Uh, you know, yes, that's, 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 um, it, 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 for people who organize protests, I want to point out some of the incredible value that you provide by giving people the experience of coming out and demanding to be heard as a group and being denied, being lied about. What for for those hundreds of thousands who showed up in Berlin, when the media said, oh, there were 17 to 20,000, what they're saying is, fuck you. Your yeah. voice, your opinion doesn't matter. As far as we're yeah. concerned, if you stand against our narrative, you don't exist. Tough yeah. shit. We're just going to write you out of the story. So I, got, I have two big questions I want to ask you to yeah. wrap this up. And, and, I, and I hope this can help our audience and me uh, get a better sense of what's going on in Germany and how that relates to the United States. Uh, although I will say congratulations on being our first European member of the Producers <laughs> Club. Welcome aboard. We're excited to have you in the Telegram chat there. But my first question, like you said, because the crackdown on the protests, both by the government and the media, denying their existence or significance, is there a major backlash and, and, and a, a, a real fundamental shift? Is there a, an historical shift in Germany? And, and if I just to explain, because in, in the United States, if our government gets a lot more vicious the way that it just did, it's kind of like no surprise. You know, this is the government that in Vietnam and the global war on terror and you know, Jap and I go, oh, wait, Japanese internment camps in World War II. Why did we need those? Oh, because Germany started the war. But it, it seems like post-World War II, German political culture has been very much more in line with the German personality of being straightforward, industrious, you know, hardworking, and, and kind of just direct and matter of fact. And then the corona lockdowns Huge departure from that, right? Am, am I off or, or what, what's going on? Obviously, there's some positive counter reaction, right? Um, I'm sorry that I maybe have to disappoint you, but uh, Germany, um, yeah, is nearly occupied, like, uh, yeah, uh, it's controlled since uh, the end of the Second World War, at least. Um, is this a this has got to be a breaking really point? Or something else. What Again? is there? Is there a fundamental change happening in Germany because of the coronavirus response and the protests? Um, because of Corona, there's a major shift uh, towards uh, Taiwan. Um, you you can't uh, to to come to the um, Corona um, yeah the kind of dictatorship. You can't go uh, uh, shopping, uh, uh, go with the train, uh, with the bus, uh, to work or anything without a mask. Um, if you don't do it, um, the, um, the, the, it's like uh, not only the police is uh, against you, also the normal people uh, who can't think for, the, for themselves um, are like calling the police if you don't wear a mask. Uh, it's, um, they are, they have, yeah, they, they are so brainwashed. Um, and to come to the protest, um, yeah, it's hard to say if this protest, um, 
uh, initiated uh, a major change. Um, it was at least for me uh, um, yeah, releasing to see that there are still so many people thinking for themselves. I'm, uh, I met some really good people and I'm now trying to connect uh, and build a network with them uh, in case of um, yeah, further government uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, repressions. Okay. Um, so, so you would say that the protesters are still representative of the minority, that most Germans yeah, are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so crazy. Uh, okay. Angela Merkel, I don't know if you um, know it, she, um, back in the DDR in East Germany, uh, she was um, propaganda uh, minister um, at the communist youth organization um, and uh, yeah she's destroying Germany on every front you can uh, imagine on every front um, and she's uh, uh, doing a really good job <laughs> at it <laughs> and um, uh, people are still so blind she even gets more voter support uh, uh, during the corona crisis it's like People, people want to want to uh, be uh, sent to Gulag. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> well, no, no, well, it's, I mean, you know the idea. It's the typical rally around the leader in a crisis kind of effect. Uh, yeah. I guess I'm 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 a little disappointed. I I was kind of hoping you would say that there is a more significant revolt in Germany, and mm -hmm. and maybe just for protesting. But I was I was kind of hoping we could make some comparative analysis here and say, well, maybe the American people need to learn from Germany and go protest despite. But I, I the mean, United I mean, States. I mean, it really was kind of a, a success because really it was the largest protest ever in Germany. But um, there's, like uh, I said, um, the. Um, um, initiator of the uh, big protest. It's called Querdenken. Um, it's like thinking, a uh, word of thinking. Um, it's like maybe they are con uh, controlled opposition because they had like really uh, big, uh, big uh, speakers and stuff like that, uh, which cost millions. And then you ask hmm, this guy, how, how, how did he get all the money for that? Uh, because he was like, uh, yeah, uh, only peace and stuff and um, don't question don't um, um, uh, question the, uh, the real tough questions you know um, the tough things uh, just uh, yeah some peace and stuff like that um, so on the one hand it was a huge um, success because of the numbers but we didn't accomplish something where, like uh, uh, the end of the corona repressions. Um, I think we're, I'm, I really think we will get a second lockdown um, in time. Now they are, the government is backing up, but I think they are just backing up for um, uh, to get even further uh, in two or three weeks. Because it's, uh, I always compared, I don't know if you have the metaphor in, uh, in the English language as well, uh, like a fork in the uh, in the cooking. Uh, a fork uh, in the road. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you, um, it's like now it's maybe too hot for the fork, and the government is like uh, making it cooler, but only to make it hotter later again. You know what I mean? Mm. To, to come back uh, later, even harder, just for the moment, so that the people don't revolt too much. Are you getting my well, point? Or yeah, no, no, absolutely. And yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that we have you calling in today, uh, doing what, what I try to do, you know, here in the United States and getting a handle on some of these bigger dynamics. And I, I think the more Americans can stick their head out, heads up and look around to see the rest of the world a little bit, the better off we all are to build that global consciousness. And what we are experiencing right now is, is really a global phenomena where if one government does it, then the other new, new world order. They are doing it everywhere. They are doing it everywhere, the new world order. It's, 
yeah, you, it's so obvious, but people still can't see it. I have, I have uh, one question before. Uh, yeah, we, we just have a minute. Please go ahead. Yes. Um, what is your um, tip to um, yeah uh, live a life? successful without the system it's really hard you know what i mean i don't know it's a self uh, self uh, sufficient like you is a really good step i will i want to try it for myself but it's hard in germany um because um the um yeah we don't have so much um, uh, yeah we, uh, you know we have the the uh, biggest um rate of taxation in germany in uh of the all the OECD countries, just to say it, it's like 70% taxation. And so you are lucky with your 50% uh, taxation, just to say. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, it could be worse. It could always be worse. Uh, so, to answer your question, I think there might be a false premise embedded in that because living by libertarian values does not mean living outside of the system. For yes. me, the way I have chosen to practically I I... Live, live by my values is such that I am off-grid. I am not a part of the electric system. I am not a part of the water system. But I'm still, I, I have my cell phone. You know, I'm, I'm plugged yeah. in. I don't I'm want to in. live in a cage. Uh, uh, like, uh, if I have to... Uh, that I could uh, feed myself from my own garden and stuff like that and my own yeah, water. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get to that because I, I know where you're going with that. That it's, it's, it, it, So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not rejecting your question. I'm just reframing it to say that the, the question should not be, hey, you're a libertarian now. How do you live outside of the system? It should be, hey, you're a libertarian now. How do you live by these values? How do you live by these principles and these morals that we have embraced as libertarians? And sometimes that means take what you can away from the system. I am against welfare as a system because it's a government program funded by violence because taxation is theft. And it's know, so corrupt and there's so many other problems. I'm I, for I, welfare. I have one personal question. Uh, I'm currently uh, studying economics, but there are like only... Um, jobs like uh, in the European Central Bank, <laughs> like the Fed, and I don't want that <laughs> because then uh, I would so, uh, uh, sell my soul. Um, but I'm like thinking about becoming a firefighter, but they are also getting paid by the government. That's like, yeah, okay, then I, I, I'm living off uh, taxation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, uh, yeah, well, yeah, see, there's know. nothing wrong with that see a lot of libertarians think like hey this is stolen property i'm not i should not be accepting stolen property but here's the thing it's being stolen from you take it back if you want to be a doctor mm -hmm. you ha in america or really anywhere in the world just because of the relationship with the government to the public about medicine you have to get a government permission slip To practice medicine mm -hmm. that's okay that's not a reason to not practice medicine if you want to be a firefighter because you want to provide that legitimate service because it is a legitimate service and that is what calls to you then do it don't be deterred because it's a government job now i would refer people also to the book freedom um and it's got some sections in uh in, in, in chapter nine on work freedom, which is how to direct your, your labor, your energy, your effort, your, your labor resources, essentially, into the economy in a way that's, that's meaningful and as ethical as possible. And I, I don't want to get into every little thing, you know, why live off grid, produce your own food, like we talked about in today's show earlier with Ed, there's a certain amount of just common sense security, even if you live in the city, even if you're totally plugged in, You should have a bug out plan. You should have a way to get out of the city with a vehicle, a place to go and food and water for a few days at very least. Like that's just basic common sense in a dangerous world. If you can afford to make that for yourself, you should do it. So I'll just end with the one basic principle that I think is really important. 
And it's to reconsider your entire life from the ground up in order to make sure that your life decisions are not being made based on false information, bad assumptions, propaganda, social pressure, or incentives created by a system that is designed fundamentally to fuck you over. So with yeah, that, we, we, don't, we got we got to wrap up the show. Uh, no but, Thank but, you for having uh, me. Thank you. Schön. Uh, wir Freiheit. Für die Freiheit. Wir Freiheit. For freedom. Yes. Thank you very much. For freedom. Auf Wiedersehen.